दक्षिण गाथा गुर्जरी गिरिकुंजवन सृष्टि भरी दक्षिण गाथा गुर्जरी गिरिकुंजवन सृष्टि भरी भूमि स्नेह शीतल साक्षरी सागर सुमन सरिता भरी है समस्त रीति कृषि मूलम धन धान्य औषधि संपन्न जान उदवाड़ा स्मृति जरथोष्ट आतश संस्कृति संजान उदवाड़ा स्मृति जरथोष्ट आतश संस्कृति उभरा
Good morning and welcome to all the participants as well as the today's speaker. Myself, Dr. Lalit Modi, along with Dr. Deepak Suthar, Organizing Secretary of this webinar series. I welcome to all in this Wet NI Webinar Series 2020, the 12th webinar on the topic of approach to canine cardiac disease which will be delivered by Dr. Sarita Devi. Do I, so I want to just brief about Dr. Sarita Devi. She is working as an assistant professor in the Department of Veterinary Medicine, College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry, Sardar Krishnagar, Dantiwada Agriculture University, Sardar Krishnagar, Gujarat, since last eight years. And she has very good knowledge about the various cardiac condition of the dog. So I welcome Dr. Sarita Devi. Before starting the webinar, I would like you, to sir. I would like to give some information about the webinar. During the presentation of the, our today's speaker, all the participants please off your mic as well as the webcam. If any question or doubt please write down in chat box your doubt will be clear by our speaker after completion of our presentation so now i request dr sarita devi so please start today's webinar Dr. Sarita. Hello. Hello. Okay. Please start the webinar. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for the welcoming. And thank you to NEU. Uh, thank you to respected Vice Chancellor of NEU, Dr. Sunil, sir, uh, for allowing me to speak on this topic. And thanks to my institute, Sadar Krishnagar Dantiwar Agriculture University, for uh, permitting me to give this talk. So I am beginning off. Approach to canine cardiac diseases. Canine cardiac diseases are very much important to save our beloved pet, to save a dog's very much honest companion. So for this uh, talk, I had divided uh, my slides into different important aspects which would make you learn the basic aspect of cardiac diseases that is the introduction the risk factor associated with the different diseases and stages of cardiac diseases physical examination that would let us to start that okay this dog is suffering from cardiac diseases the various clinical signs general clinical signs and specific clinical signs the laboratory diagnosis and important cardiac diseases, that is cardiomyopathies, mitral wall disease, heart form disease, and a few arrhythmias, a few touch, a, small, a few drops has been taken from a vast, large uh, arrhythmia chapter, and uh, heart failure, and lastly, the important things that should be taken into consideration. So cardiac diseases, everyone is knowing at this time that dogs are suffering from cardiac diseases like humans, but with different intensity and different forms. But the basic pathophysiology is almost the same. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of dogs are affected with heart diseases. Heart is actually the genesis of life. It is uh, supplying the oxygenated blood to the tissues, providing nutrition to these tissues and itself getting very much less amount of blood to survive. So heart diseases is actually defined as a condition which is affecting the structure or function of a heart. Now there are very much uh, primary and secondary or cardiac or non-cardiac diseases which are affecting the heart but we will focus on the two major 
major comorbidities, major factors that are affecting the heart that are acquired heart diseases is 95 percent it is much more seen next is the congenital heart disease that is approximately contributing to five percent of overall cardiac diseases acquired heart disease it means that the diseases which are acquired by during the lifetime of a dog okay congenital heart disease is very much clear that it is being seen in by birth or it is a developmental defect in the uh, structure of heart that is during the birth and is appreciated after the birth. The common congenital heart disease conditions seen are pulmonary st uh, stenosis, subaortic stenosis, ventricular septal defect, and patent ductus arteriosus. And these approximately vary according to 31%, 32%, 23%, 15%, 7% in various studies. So the focused uh, diseases on uh, in this webinar are valvular diseases that are accounting for 70 to 75% of acquired heart diseases. And that is myxomatous mitral wall disease, or it is also said as uh, mitral wall disease mitral wall disease next condition which is seen is heart lung disease that is contributing to 13 percent of the acquired heart diseases myocardial diseases that is very much important that is accounting to eight percent of the acquired heart diseases that is dilated cardiomyopathy so next week this is a simple picture before going deep into the diseases that I want to just uh, make brief that how does a normal heart work? Everybody is doing, but it's just to sensitize that what are the points where we have to focus. So simply, this is a picture you are seeing. It, everybody is doing that. There are four chambers of heart, right side and left side. The function of right side is to get the deoxygenated blood receiving from the lungs for the oxygenation. Left atrium, it will receive the oxygenation part of the blood, and left ventricle, the main thickened chamber, main contractile chamber, it will push the blood with a great force and get the blood to the whole distributed to the whole body. Now, these two walls, that is tricuspid wall and mitral wall, these are very much important walls because they are like just a, a flap. These flaps are closing when the blood is being received by the right ventricle. And if these flaps on the right, left side will get closed, when the left atrium will push all the oxygenated blood into the left ventricle to get it circulated all over the body. And there are two systems, that is sympathetic and parasympathetic systems that are working on the heart. These are the uh, systems, nervous system, autonomic nervous system. So parasympathetic, it will it is on the decrease side. If it is affected part, then you will see in decrease in the rate of contraction. Sympathetic, it, you will see the ionotropic effect, that is the uh, positive ionotropic effect, that is you will see the contraction rate uh, at a proper uh, amount and rate. The chronotropic effect rate is, uh, the rate at the time is very much important, so it will be in a normal mode. Lose your tropic effect, you will see the relaxation, this myocardial relaxation will be at a proper time. So, I, uh, at the whole parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system will affect the system of heart and these are the points which will if any of the point any of the wall any of the conduction system that we will see in the later side or any of the system sympathetic or parasympathetic system gets activated by xyz factor then it will lead to the heart disease These are the risk factors, very much important risk factor. Age, breed, and sex, that is established, well established. Age, breed, sex, heredity is also very much established factors. The new to us is that the month of birth, people have researched that a month of birth, a dog, a pup, conceived and born pup in a specific month will affect the risk preponderance to the cardiovascular disease in that particular dogs or pups. Obesity, very much researched topic in these days and in humans it is very much related to the cardiovascular health and that we will see nutritional deficiency, very much important in dogs because some of the uh, heart diseases like uh, dilated cardiomyopathy is very much, very much reversed 
if detected in uh, uh, some breeds like uh, and uh, by supplementation of these nutritional deficiencies, uh, these are uh, very much reversed. This is the breed sepsis building. Here we are seeing the mode of inheritance, and the breed, and the disease. So here in India, we used to keep uh, Great Dane, Labradors, Doberman, Boxers, Beagle is being researched on in cardiovascular medicine. Uh, Spaniels are also being kept, Bastions are uh, very much kept. So the most important disease, which is, which is commonly seen after mitral and the most important breed that is also known as heartbreaking breed is for susceptibility to particular directed cardiomyopathy. So viewing this slide, I want to say, I want to say to the uh, listeners that this is important. Why? Because if we are keeping, because these are the breeds commonly kept and for the very much need of guarding and very much need of uh, just uh, as a pet means these are you are see you will see in uh, one to ten or every uh, ten in nine dog homes so if you are keeping a pet owner is keeping these dogs so you should be uh, it is very much uh, important to keep in mind that these are the breeds which are very much prone to primary dilated cardiomyopathy so this should be taken into account next is obesity obesity actually it is uh, very much reported uh, in european countries and the rate is almost uh, 16 to 62 percent this is what actually your dog particularly labrador breed and uh, golden retriever to a less extent but labrador dashams these are very much pro to obesity now this obesity is increasing actually the fat index which is you will see in uh, obese dogs to be 45%. Now, how this obesity is getting into cardiac disorder is it is causing obesity related cardiac dysfunction. That is, it is increasing the cardiac output because it is just scientifically uh, we can think that obese, an obese uh, dog will having the higher body fat index. So, much more energy is needed, and that's why the cardiac output. Is increased. There is neuro various neurohormonal activation. There is uh, a reduced excretion of sodium and water. So ultimately, the systolic and diastolic ventricular dysfunction is affected. And also, you can see that obese dog is very much uh, prone to exercise intolerance. Now, what is this exercise intolerance? Is uh, thirty minutes exercise is to be ideally given to a dog morning evening. So your dog that is very much active. If it is becoming obese due to or if it is related to cardiac disorder, then you will see that it will be reluctant to move. It will be uh, showing uh, that dyspnea, etc. Okay. Now this obesity can lead to. It is a research being done, and as the obesity related cardiac dysfunction are very much less studied in canine, so extrapolation from human studies in, is being done, and it's being uh, found that altered insulin sensitivity that will lead to the altered metabolism, altered tissue perfusion and uh, utilization of nutrients. This lipidemia, that is increased concentration of uh, triglycerides in cholesterol and more importantly this inflammatory pro-inflammatory markers that is IL-8 that had lead to the altered myocardial metabolism and it is being seen that obese dog is prone to left ventricular hypertrophy much more common than the normal dogs which is having the body weight uh, fat index of 15 to 30 percent. So this is the point should be uh, taken care of and we can uh, screen these dogs for cardiac disorders. Now this is important thing that is risk by month, birth month. This is what's uh, in simple language that a dog is born in this month will more grow to uh, cardiovascular disorder. So here we are seeing that there are a green line that is non-cardiac breeds. Non-cardiac breed means those breeds that I mentioned earlier irrespective of that means they are not prone to by genetic cause they are not prone to cardiac uh, disorders. But the most uh, susceptible month or birth month in which the cardiovascular risk occurring to non-cardiac breed dogs is the month of September. It's been researched. Cardiac breeds are born in the month of 
uh, same in the month of September, sorry, the non cardiac is for July and uh, that cardiac breed is for uh, September. So these are the things that is researched on a few number of dogs. So it needs to be further uh, researched upon. And this uh, shaded area, it is that the conception of this particular months is being thought that these conception months if occurring in a dog is more prone to cardiovascular diseases. So this is a, a new thing that should be researched upon. Nutritional concern. Nutritional concern is uh, very much important because some of the cardiac diseases are reversible on the account that they are receiving a lesser amount of nutrition and they can be reversed if they have been provided very much uh, amount of nutrient needed for a proper cardiac health. So every nutrient, every nutrient is interrelated to each other. The most important nutrients we are discussing here is taurine and carnitine. These are to be supplemented. Now why? Actually, the taurine is very much important for maintaining the myocardial health, contractility. Carnitine is very much important because you, you can see that most uh, the energy requirement because heart is pumping heart is pumping because it is receiving some sort of energy that sort of energy is needed or is uh, obtained by the oxidation of fatty acids so that carnitine is very much important for that that it is these both both uh, these amino acids are needed by the dogs now the question is these are essential amino acids but it has been found that some breeds that is particularly large breeds actually large size of breeds are much more prone to cardiac disorder because it's been found that they are producing lesser concentration of taurine uh, in their body lesser concentration of taurine in their body that could be because of any factor so that should be taken care of, and these are to be supplemented sodium very much important now, the question is sodium that is I have written stage 1 and stage 2. Stage 1 you have to provide less than 100 mg and stage 2 less than 80 mg. Now, this stage 1 and stage 2 we will discuss earlier. Actually, these are the stage that has been classified by American Heart, uh, Heart Association, New York uh, classification of heart system. Here, sodium is to be restricted completely in case of stage 4. That is, you, have been, you are seeing a dog suffering from the cardiovascular disorder and you have to completely restrict the sodium. But you cannot completely restrict the sodium in stage 1 and 2 because complete restriction of sodium will also, will also just make a dog more prone to the adverse effect of heart failure because it will increase the uh, intravascular that volume and it will uh, cause the RAS mechanism to just work more at a greater pace okay fiber fiber is very much important that is it will maintain your uh, obesity dogs obesity and it will help in digestion so we should know that carnitine and taurine they are produced from methionine and cysteine that is required for body biosynthesis now methionine and cysteine you will provide it from a protein a protein is to be digested properly for proper digestion you should include the proper amount of fiber in your uh, diet This is another uh, nutrient that is potassium, choline, vitamin E, and selenium, copper, omega-3 fatty acids. These are having the specific roles. Potassium is very much important because the major micronutrients that is sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. These are very much important in the functioning of a heart, the contraction and relaxation of a heart. In the cardiovascular medicine, when we are treating a patient with a heart disease, there is loss of potassium, so we have to just maintain the interconnectivity between these nutrients so that the contraction and relaxation can go in a proper way. Vitamin E and selenium copper, these are very much needed for the glutathione peroxidase uh, it will cause reduction if reduction is there then there will be no synthesis of cysteine if there is no synthesis of cysteine then there is no synthesis of taurine and carnitine so very much important copper it is very much important in the energy metabolism is it is, it is very much important in a function of very much critical enzyme and to our interest it is important in maintaining the epithelial membranes and the uh, energy exchange process omega-3 fatty acids everybody is taking in omega-3 fatty acids in case of uh, human heart health now these are they will they will help to stabilize the heart muscle cells they will just reduce the uh, 
the reactive oxygen species because they are sterilizing the heart muscle. Means every uh, threshold, the threshold which which the heart muscle will get affected is just maintaining by supplementation of these nutrients. The nutrients, especially this omega three fatty acid, carnitine and taurine, because they are strengthening the cardiac muscles. The cardiac muscles are strengthening, so it means the threshold level is increasing. It means that they are becoming more strong. Or if X Y Z condition occurs, by which is uh, letting them to prone to heart diseases, so we are having the time. To elevate the clinical sign, or the preclinical uh, stage can be judged very easily because we are having the time. Now, this uh, is very much important because now the, uh, the thing is important that we are having heart disease, cardiac, congenital, and acquired. But this is very much important because on this basis we will perform the treatment. On this basis we will categorize the very much important mitral wall disease. So mm -hmm. these are the stages that is being. Uh, So these are the stages that is stage A, stage B, C and D. The stage B is further classified into stage B1 and B2. Now stage A, that is you are seeing no disease is present at this stage because it means that dog are coming. Uh, if the owner may complain with the uh, owner may come with the complaint, but you will see not clinically a disease at this time. Stage B, it is the, the murmur is heard, but there are no visible signs of heart failure. Means you can see a uh, abnormal heart sound, but you cannot identify any okay, signs. You will not see as a clinician. You will not see any visible signs that we will see further. It is further classified into stage B1 and B2. The heart does not appear enlarged because it is on X-ray, and in stage B2, the heart does appear enlarged or changed on X-ray. What is actually this X-ray or radiography? This has classified the stage B into stage B1 and B2. And this is important for treating a heart disease. Stage C, you will see that the evidence of heart failure is visible. And at this stage, treatment is uh, very much necessary so that we can prevent the stage D. Stage D is advanced stage. It is very much advanced stage and at this stage the heart failure is very much challenging and very much hard to manage because in case of canine medicine uh, there is there are no specific trials or specific uh, uh, groups or a very much uh, increased number of samples are not included or classified that uh, for the treating in such uh, such heart failure uh, patients, but there are although there are guidelines which we can follow, but it requires further research to be done upon. This is very, very much important. Physical examination and signal. It is like that a dog is coming to you. Now you have to think of that. Okay, this may be a disease or this may be not a disease. In particularly, there are machines. There are echocardiography. Uh, uh, radiology, there are ECG, there is there, there are things, there are machines, there are very much advanced techniques. But these advanced techniques are approached after a clinician's hand. That is a auscultation, that is a signalment, that is a physical examination. So a dog is coming to you, signalment, that is you have to be clear, you have to take history from a dog owner. You have to also also take the pedigree record. You have to also pedigree record will tell you that okay, these are the father and mother of this particular species or breed of dog, and they are being prone to such type of cardiac diseases. Because I had told in the earlier slide, there are some diseases which are having the familial inheritance, means there are mode of inheritance, autosomal recessive, recessive, XYZ. So if there will be a pedigree record, we can easily get to know that. We can easily make make our mind, and we can directly switch to that cardiac examination protocol. This may be susceptibility cases, so signal is very much important. History from a owner is very much important because there are many many diseases for which history is taking very much account, and uh, a dog because a cardiac dog will lose its activity. It will show the disinterest in every activity because of the dysfunction of a heart system. And who is the person who will tell you? That is the owner. So this signalment is initially that is history, pedigree record, age, breed, sex. Because the younger dogs are very much prone. That is below one year of age. Uh, that is very much prone to 
the congenital heart diseases, the adult dog that is five to six years of age when very much prone to the dilated cardiomyopathy. This is very much important. Now coming to this physical examination. Physical examination in my uh, reality, I have just uh, made this into thoracic auscultation, which is the you can say very much important tool. Now, thoracic auscultation is simple. You are using a simple stethoscope. And normal, you will see two things. One, you will see a normal thing, that is heart rate. You will see the rate normal as 70 to 120. Puppies, a new one puppy will come into you. The very much uh, important is heart rate, maybe about 240. But it, within a week, it will rest to the normal. If it is not resting, then if there is a problem, you can go for a congenital heart disease testing. Now, if something is normal, you have heard, arrhythmia, you have heard, murmur, you have heard, muffled heart sound, you have heard. These are the abnormal heart sound. Means these abnormal heart sound will come if anything. Arrhythmia will come when the conduction system is abnormal. Murmur will come if something is there in the wall. Something is there in the heart. Means where other than normal, these things are touching the abnormal side. Okay, but these are the things somehow you may also see in anemia cases. Anemia due to X Y Z condition like a parasitic condition or low uh, hemoglobin etc. But you have to rule out. I, how can you you rule out? You have to just correlate with the clinical examination that you will see further and also the laboratory examination you can take the hemoglobin into account okay now murmur is very much important there are two types non-pathological and pathological okay. that pathological is functional innocent that i told you you will see in case of anemia if a dog is being walked too much and brought to you or exercised too much and brought to you you will hurt these murmurs but these are functional or innocent means these are very soft and will not vulnerable to a very much bar large uh, space and they will uh, just rest uh, after giving the rest or after some time after treating that the primary condition you the things will be resolved but the pathological murder is very much important then you can suspect it okay this is the heart huh? but sometimes what happens uh, this ambulatory even monitoring uh, echocardiography is uh, electrocardiography is very much important ambulatory means the thing that ambulatory it is running you may be knowing that a heart patient in a human case if you have to, if a doctor wants to detect a continuous heart rate monitoring, it will be, it will just attach a cuff, that pressure cuff to your uh, shoulder and it will attach the machine. And 20, it will record the 24 hours or weekly or the uh, according to condition. Now, same can be done in involuntary even mon uh, monitoring in dogs. That is in case of that old man's days they are very much prone to arrhythmia the if any other dog presented to you at the time of uh, clinics they may be presenting the arrhythmia murmurs or maybe not in that case you can tie this ambulatory even monitor ACG and you can go for it and if you are getting this again you have to follow the channel pathological heart disease but if you are not completely getting these numbers and uh, the heart rate is also normal but clinically the picture is showing that okay, something is problem in the CDS system then you have to correlate clinically and then again you have to uh, advise them yearly checkups or weekly checkups okay respiratory rate very much important uh, you can get the lung sound very clear you can uh, if there is pulmonary edema that is uh, the condition associated with dcm you can go for uh, the you can see the crackles and you can see the dyspnea you can see the epidural thrills you can just judge this respiratory rate and with additional diagnostic tests you can go for respect for or diagnose for heart disease the next important thing is mucous membrane Femoral pulses, abdominal swelling, exercise intolerance, cupping, and rectal temperature, body condition, behavior, jugular distension. Now, mucous membrane is very much important. You can just check the eye. If it is synod, there are two things. If it's suffering from heart disease, you will see the capital referring time increase and the synodic mucous membrane because the oxygen saturation in case of heart diseases is very much uh, gone to down. That is 80 to 85 percent. So again by all these is to be subjected to additional diagnostic tests and then you can confirm that it is a heart disease femoral pulses they should be correlated with the heart rate and the weak and vomiting pulses are uh, seen in case of heart disease abdominal swelling very much important that is excitus you are suffering from a heart failure dog is suffering from a heart failure exercise intolerance i just described that dog is very much uh, reluctant to walk very much reluctant to run very much reluctant to uh, just 
go on the staircases it will just lie down in the corner not responding to the master so it is very much important thing that this is the thing actually the owner will because owner cannot go for thoracic auscultation mucous membrane etc but the things which the owner will get into your notice is the exercise intolerance next important thing is the coughing you will the owner may come to you that okay the dog is coughing too much that will be a harsh cough honking cough like if uh, the dog is something trying to clear the throat there is no mucus so coughing is very much important and especially in case of heart warm cases because in heart warm cases the coughing is uh, uh, supposed to be in the nocturnal coughing that is in the night time because these microphalliars are being diagonal relationship but actually the things are changing things change with the time earlier it's been said that there is nocturnal coughing but now it's been said that the dog if the dog is more active in the daytime also then you can uh, see the uh, coughing in the heart home cases also behavior body condition rectal temperature body condition will be cake hectic because uh, that depressed dog and uh, the weakness and it will lead to the anorexia and anorexia will lead to the cake hectic body condition also in case of heart diseases the other mechanism which are going regulated inside the body as a compensatory mechanism that will lead to the production of many cytokines many things many reactions that will lead to the uh, anorexia the next important is dubular distension very much important it will seen in the heart failure cases that is congestive heart failure cases and that you will see the dubular distension because as such it will not distend but because of the uh, that venous pressure increased venous pressure back flow of blood because of the dilatation of the heart you will see the distension in the upper one third area of the neck This is heart murmuring grading scale that are very important. One, two by six, two by six, three by six, four by six, five by six, and six by six. And the most importantly, in case of uh, heart diseases, basically the dilated myocardial congestive heart failure. Four by it is reported by the other that four by six and five by six are very much. Uh, very much heard and uh, this are very much audible and the difference in these two five six and six by six only that if the six by six actually there is the stage that is very much advanced heart failure the cardiac heart failure so these heart failure is actually leading to the compromised state and the heart rate is very much audible the heart rate is very much increased the murmur is very much audible if you will rise the stethoscope lift it One centimeter above the surface, then also you can uh, listen to it. These are the locations: mitral wall, left AV wall, aortic wall, uh, pulmonary wall, tricuspid wall, mitral wall, left intercostal space, aortic wall, left. In Fourth intercostal space, dorsal to MV, usually at the level of point of shoulder. Pulmonary wall is left third intercostal space. Tricuspid wall is uh, right third to fourth intercostal space. Actually, we used to auscultate heart at the left side of the heart, but right side of the heart is to be uh, side of the animal is also to be auscultated for this wall and this tricuspid wall defects. these are the location of wall pictorial view very much clear this is the same thing which i had described earlier this is the left side of the heart and right side of the heart clinical sign these are the common clinical sign related to cardiac diseases excise intolerance tiredness cardiac ataxia failure gums abdominal swelling coughing collapse dyspnea these are the general signs it is you in any cardiac disease whether it is a heart form whether it is a dcm whether it is a mvd because all this will lead to heart disease and it will deteriorate uh, altering the structure and function so this will lead to the heart condition and these are the general clinical signs specifically these are the actually the things or the condition or the generation of uh, these clinical are the syncope lethargy or tiredness the weakness or fainting which i was telling is just due to reduced cerebral perfusion reduced cerebral perfusion is bad 
the heart is going to uh, going towards a compensatory mechanism. Uh, cardiac model is acting. It means that a uh, failing heart or the heart tissues which are being normal, they are trying, the body is trying to let the perfusion going to the vital organs, very much important to me for the maintenance and for the hemodynamics. For, for in that compensatory mechanism, there is reduced cerebral perfusion. So you will see that syncope, lethargy, and tiredness, and also this will lead to uh, the exercise intolerance. Okay, there is a reduced stamina, there is a weakness of, uh, you will see in the dogs, that is particularly due to the reduced skeletal muscle perfusion. It is the same thing. The body is compensating. So the vital organs are being supplied with the more blood and the skeletal, the body is trying, okay, some blood is to be uh, maintained because it is going towards a compensatory mechanism. So because of the reduced skeletal muscle perfusion, the dog will just go and lie down at one place, it will not able to rise, it will not uh, go anywhere and not respond to the muscle squat. Next, then you will see cuffing, you will see dyspnea, you will uh, see orthopnea. This is particularly due to the pulmonary edema. You will see the pulmonary edema in case of heart disease as well. Because as I had told earlier, there are four channels, one part is uh, receiving the deoxidated blood, one part is trying and one part is in the requirement to maintain the oxygenation of blood. So that particular oxygenation of blood is leading the deoxygenation back to the lungs. So that perfusion hemodynamics is to be maintained. If it is not maintaining, then if back pressure is there, congestive heart failure is there, it means that that pipe, that particular wall is getting stagnated. In some sort of blood will be always there. And that will lead to the pressure, that will lead to the pulmonary edema and pleural effusion. And that will lead to the coughing. Abdominal distension, that may be due to the ascites, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, these all conditions will lead to the complex reactions. Diagnosis. The physical examination which I had described earlier is a part of diagnosis that you have to go through it thoroughly. Then the other important things because the other important things also include that hematological profile, the biochemical profile. That will also help us to correlate the diseases to the extent to which it had damaged the body, the extent to which it had damaged the function systems of the other organs. So, in congestive heart failure, in congenital heart anomalies, in bacterial endocarditis, cardiomegaly, congestive heart failure, you will see the RBC function, dysfunction, you will see the inflammatory parts of the blood that is leukocytosis you will see, monocytosis you will see, neutrophilia you will see and these are these all complex reactions, these all hematological profile, these you this mainly because mainly because the disease is pressuring, the disease is pressuring the vascular resistance, the uh, the endothelium, the particular major minor blood vessels and uh, this endocarditis is causing that inflammatory cytokines because body is trying to get rid of all these things. So in response, that is a hemodynamic response in relation to the cardiovascular disorders. Biochemical parameters. This actually it is used uh, earlier now also, but some of these are very difficult to titrate because they are having function in every part, uh, every vital part of the body. So here the creatinine kinase that is CKA is being used, and uh, it is having isozymes, three isozymes. The one CKA is a uh, heart function. It is affecting the heart function, and uh, the plasma high half life is less. That is three hours serum ASG that is aspartate as a uh, minor transferase it is having half-life much more but it is also seen in uh, mainly seen in skeletal muscle and liver so it is not it should not be a part of our test but it is being done so it's been incorporated here lactate dehydrogenase it is having five isozymes but electrophoretic it is very difficult to titrate one two three four five protein it is not done the one is specific to heart and kidney so it is not being used c-reactive protein is major acute phase protein in case of dogs you will see in condition increase in pyrolysis, GCM, pulmonic stenosis. Actually, it is uh, C reactive protein, and uh, they are increased in the four hours following the damage, and it remains for very much uh, 
much days that is really for 48 hours so this is important part of biochemical reaction sodium potassium phosphorus calcium these are the major ions and they are very much important because in case of congestive heart failure because of the mechanism of trans activation that's in order to mark hyponatremia and if you are seeing this and uh, actually these are also helpful because in sometimes the dots is not uh, in having the different thresholds, if it is not presented with the clinical science very much appreciably, these parameters, these meteorological and biochemical parameters can be correlated clinically and we can go for, okay, this could be a thing, this could be ruled out. Specific laboratory test. These are in trend, very much important in uh, human medicine also in canine medicine. The last one that is microRNA, it is being researched upon and the most commonly followed is troponin I and nt -MP. These are very much important. Here I remember range. Now what I want to say is these are the troponin I. It is having three isoforms. It is IC and T. And it is actually a leakage biomarker. And second one is a functional biomarker. Chronicity can be judged by the troponin in acute cases, over heart diseases, that ventricle majorly, the ventricular wall stress means the acute, the acute stress which has been given to a, a heart muscle can be very much importantly judged by these functional biomarkers. And uh, these are, it has been said that very, very low, very, very low sometimes or not, at least they are present or not present in the circulation in very, very much low amount that is not detectable in the cytosol. But when, when there is an injury to a heart, the, these levels are increased appreciably and we can go for diagnostic tests, diagnostic kits, uh, same as used for human medicine. And this anti grow MP can be used, it is a quantitative test, we can go for ELISA, we can go in human labs and do these tests and we can, we can judge the disease very much early. We can judge the damage, we can form the prognosis, we can form the therapeutic plan, and we can this, uh, save our dog. And these are actually, they are related with this cardiac troponin I actin biosin complex, this contraction and relaxation, they mediate with calcium and extreme influx and influx. And this is very much important marker study upon. These micro RNAs, actually, these are, these are non coding RNAs. Actually, non coding RNAs means they are. Uh, representing a specific gene responsible for a specific condition. So here we can see that these micro RNA mentioned here 2061330 as specific for AF, that is atrial fibrillation. This hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that is much more commonly seen in cats is uh, represented with these micro RNAs. Dilated cardiomyopathy, mitral wall disease, every common disease with dogs is studied with this micro RNAs. But these are uh, the specific notion or specific details is very much researched or also involved, it should involve large sample size to get an established fact and to let these micro RNAs include in the common special laboratory test like troponin I and NT pro NP to much more facilitate the diagnosis, prognosis and treatment. This cardiorenal syndrome. It is actually a very much important in uh, human medicine and this cardiorenal syndrome is also important in canine medicine because much of extrapolation for extrapolation is from human medicine to canine medicine. Actually, this is the thing that is primarily failing organ can be heart or the kidney, but till date that a kidney effect or a kidney is affected due to the primary heart disease or we can say that the kidney dysfunction is a consequence of heart dysfunction is not still clear and these patients are very much difficult to manage and that is it is like disorders of heart and kidneys whether acute or chronic can induce same acute or chronic dysfunction in another organ or vice versa now this, uh, this, but this is the important condition, and it, it is mainly represented, or it may be represented in case in advanced heart type conditions. So, the three important biochemical parameters that is VUM, platinum nitrogen, simple creatinine, and this symmetric dimethyl arginine. These all three parameters will tell us that okay, this is the dog suffering from cardiorenal syndrome, and it uh, that increases with the blood filtration rate 
and uh, the important thing that this SDMA symmetry dynamic arginine is new to me also and uh, this is uh, not in human medicine it's in canine medicine actually the thing is the other above parameter that is new in creatinine that will shoot up when the kidney is affected with 75 percent of neuron getting damaged with this SDMA you will see in an increase when GFR is reduced up to 40 percent so if you are uh, if you are allowing this or uh, letting this uh, biochemical test to be incorporated in cardiovascular syndrome cases or in or as such uh, in simple uh, cases which are presented with very much advanced sign so you can go for that okay this is going towards the cardiovascular syndrome because it is showing the uh, disease uh, propensity at the rate of 40% means 70% is very much high and these two will come at 75% and this will come at 40% so it is very clear that this is very much important to be incorporated and very much important parameter for a cardiovascular syndrome. Now the important thing cardiomyopathies this is a normal heart you are seeing with the left ventricle and uh, left atrium and left ventricle this is hypertrophic restrictive and dilated cardiomyopathy okay these are three different things we can talk about Cardiography. Hypertrophy means the thing has swelled, means the muscle size is hypertrophied, it has the muscle size has increased. Restrictive means you, you can see here the size is increased, here it is normal. Restrictive means these walls has restricted themselves to work normally. Restricted themselves to work normally means they had become rigid. They had become rigid, tense. You can just imagine a tense thing is difficult to be contract. It is very much clear. But an easy or pulvy thing is very much easy to contract. So, then restrictive cardiomyopathy, these walls did restrict themselves. While restricting the inflow, outflow, the upflow, preload, they all will get distorted. Okay. Now, this is the important thing that we will discuss that is dilated cardiomyopathy. Here you will see the chamber is dilated. These walls are not dilated, these walls are thinned. Here the walls are Increase in size, hypertrophy, we are restricted, we are thinned because of the dilatation. And this is the thing which is very, very important, commonly seen in dogs. This is the thing which is seen in cats. Dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, the reasons of genetic susceptibility, nutritional deficiency, all these I had discussed. Secondary causes may be infectious cause, exposure to toxin, anti cancer medication, hypothyroidism, nutritional uh, deficiencies, and PICM. Now, these infectious causes or exposure to toxins, these infectious causes means uh, now. The diseases seen in that the baby shows, the cellulitis, all these conditions are uh, letting us to um, move our uh, letters to means they are they are uh, stressing upon us to include a, a cardiovascular parameter also in that disease because these there are a lot of antigen antibody complex reactions and the endothelium wall is affected and they you will see the cardiac infection. Okay, now anti cancer medication actually uh, that is uh, that uh, lymphoma, etc. Treated by the anti cancer medication, particularly doxorubicin, that will cause that uh, dietary cardiomyopathy because it will affect cause because of the reactive oxygen species, because of that altered mechanism of oxidative stress, you, it will put stress on the walls and you will see PCM. Hypothyroidism is very much important actually. It will increase that uh, peripheral resistance, the muscles, are, the vascular endothelium is affected, and you will see the DCM. Nutritional cause discussed earlier here, taurin and vitamin is very important. PICM, this is very much important. Now, this is TAC TA, it is included in now, after, uh, with some time, that it may be also cause of DCM. Why? Because this tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathy is like that. Your uh, tachycardia means your ventricle is contracting at a very much fast rate. Very much fast rate means sinus tachycardia is called as 160, 180 above. It, this TICM has been increased. Up to 220, 300, 400, and or for a longer period of time, for a long period of days, twenty days, monthly, that will lead to the PICM, and it, it is being specifically set and, and related to another thing that we will discuss later. This is the brief susceptibility for dilated cardiomyopathy. You can see American Doctor Spaniel DM. And the box source, new farmland, great day, and Irish wall food. Irish wall food and new farmland, very much less people used to keep in India. But these breeds are very much kept, and these are very much prone to heart disease. So, if you are keeping these breeds, then think of the nutritional concern, think of the regular checkup to the uh, cardiologist.
clinical sign, lethargy, weakness, weight loss, abdominal distension, arrhythmias, and sudden death, atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardia. Actually, sudden death is very much important. It's like that, okay, your dog, your dog can also be uh, prone to this sudden death. This sudden death is actually what acute heart failure means the, the changes are going at a very faster rate towards the decompensation mechanism or chronic sign, and you will see the sudden death. And it is particularly seen in case of boxers. So you will have you will have a healthy boxer, and uh, it will be in clinical stage. It will be sleeping. Next day you will form your boxer dead because of this sudden death. So it is very important to people who is to keep boxers. Diagnosis: These are the picture and a radiologist. A radiologist very much because uh, see, uh, like human medicine, there are different branches: radiologist, and ultrasonographist, a surgeon, a clinician, a cardiologist. So here in veterinary science, the thing should be under the one health program. That is, these signs should be interrelated, should be interrelated, and should be uh, taken help upon to save a uh, owner's beloved pet. Now, thoracic radiography, it is very much important and along with the physical examination because it will see uh, you uh, give you a clear picture of the heart. Here in picture, you can appreciate it is a very much globoid size and normally what happens is the heart, uh, the much knowledge which I am having is that heart, it should not rest on the sternum in case of normal heart but in case of dilated cardiomyopathy this whole heart according to the chamber affected it will if whole heart in case of congestive heart failure it will become a globoid means a ball line and here you can see that it is five, occupying five intercostal space five intercostal space means its size is enlarging and it is increasing towards the width and here you can see that it's occupying the 4.5 intercostal space because here you can see the these pericardial effusions you can see the thickening of the pulmonary branch and all these are because of the contributing factors by the failing heart the heart going towards the decompensatory mechanism at a more rapid rate ECG positioning ECG positioning you should be in uh, right lateral decompensing means your left side should be up and uh, you had should be the lead two is where uh, lead one, two, and three are important. These are the primary leads which can be easily accessed, and these are the important points that you have to record for 25 mm per second. You can also record for 50 mm if you have to let this wave forms very clear. And uh, if uh, you if arrhythmia you are seeing, you can increase the length of the tracing. And the most important thing, the thing, the basic important thing you have to do is what you have to use a wooden table, and you can use a uh, ultrasonographic jelly but sometimes happen you can you cannot have this ultrasonic jelly so you can simply use water you can simply use that conduction system acetone because actually what is this the heart is surrounded by a sac it is having the fluid a cushion that is provided to the heart now you are knowing that water is very good medium of electricity and this water is around the heart now we are applying these electrodes towards the electron process in this particular pertinent process and we are getting those current which are circulating here through the ECG we are recording the ECG okay now the indirected effect is going the part is going towards the dilated so the thing that we can uh, appreciate the ECG there are many many things many many things but here in this point at this point i want to say that the p wave is measured that is wide and it's notched there you will see left atrial enlargement you are seeing this wide this n shaped light and tall p waves you are seeing this tall p waves you are seeing this rs pattern here it is r here it is it these are rs pattern they are very much patterns. these are very much uh, discussed in human cardiology so here you are seeing this and it is uh, going to right ventricular enlargement these are the R waves, 3.7 MV. Uh, actually, in ECG, actually, it has been discussed by this any webinar series earlier, very much, uh, very much, uh, very much critically and very much importantly. There are boxes, there are measurements. We are. This is a graph paper simple, and uh, this we have to just measure these lines. We have to correlate with the healthy values, and then we can go for this uh, that the ECG is uh, detecting us with. Uh, this abnormality but actually yeah, every time it is not like that ECG will rule out the things so because ECG is telling you only the conduction abnormality so best part diagnosed with ECG is arrhythmia but these things these enlargement these uh, variations these m forms should be correlated with ecocardiography 
be radiographically clinically, and that will tell you the things. This is the left ventricular enlargement. You can see the lack of P waves, wide and QRL, complex and irregular rhythm. You cannot appreciate the P waves here. Echocardiography. This is the dilated. Uh, see the dilated left ventricle and atrial chambers. Actually, this echocardiography you have to approach for an uh, echocardiograph expert. And what is the difference? That this echocardiography will very much accurately tell you that what type of uh, cardiomyopathy is the dog suffering from. That is uh, restrictive or it is uh, hypertrophic or it is a dilated because it can measure the things. It can measure the chamber width. It can measure the system, so you can easily uh, tell that what type of cardiomyopathy is this. Now, cardiovascular medication for dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay. Now, these are the conditions which a dilated cardiomyopathy will lead to: sinus rhythm, atrial fibrillation, ventricular arrhythmia. So, the important clinical this is divided into preclinical stage, clinical stage. Preclinical stage is that okay, you are uh, having the dog, but you the specific signs are not being noticed. So, not NT is no therapy, means sometimes therapy is not needed, but regular visits are needed. So, we are going for the beta blockers, and uh, because sinus rhythm, atrial fibrillation, ventricular arrhythmia means these are the increasing rates. So, we have to decrease. The rate we have to normalize the rate, so we have to just slow down that blast mechanism. So, this is the antitensin enhancing enzyme inhibitors and beta blockers. Okay, clinical stage very much, very much uh, easy, very much important because here you are seeing the sign very much clearly. If you are seeing it, uh, edema, you, we go for a diuretic, PMO vendor, ACE, I spinal electron beta blockers, PMO vendor, very good, very wonder drug, actually, very wonder drug, and uh, is this incorporated in FDA treatment of cardiovascular diseases? Why? Because it will actually DCM means dilated cardiomyopathy simply. Okay, your heart is suffering, your heart is suffering, your body is compensating and maintaining the hemodynamics to a some extent, but the heart is suffering. Okay, who are suffering heart? The also it also needs oxygen. It needs oxygen. It also needs blood supply, and that very much less amount is uh, get uh, getting to it. So if the failing heart, if you will put pressure, you will put, you have to select the drugs which will which should not increase the myocardial oxygen demand. So Pimovenda, this is very good drug. This is wonder drug, and this is very much in use available in India. Safe heart, safe heart, and it will take care of the condition. Now, this is mitosomitis mitral wall disease. This is also a common disease. As I have said you in the first slide, that more than 75% of uh, diseases near is contributed by this particular condition. And it is also an important cause of a dog suffering from uh, this kind of fear. And the most important thing is very slow progression of this disease that may be and it is particularly a disease of Cavalier King Charles Pan. And as it is slow progressing, so sometimes what happens that dogs, uh, dogs will show mild, will be mild form or severe form. Severe form will go to the congestive artery. Mild form will give a uh, you will you can have your pet with a uh, normal lifespan and you will it will remain clinically silent in case of mild form. More than 16 years of dog are affected and male dogs will have. Uh, you will see that paper will show that male dogs will have higher prevalence of mitral wall disease because what happens, male dogs is having low threshold and female dogs, it means that there is some condition you are having a higher threshold for it, it means that whatever condition is undergoing, the body is undergoing, but when it will reach to a very serious condition in uh, advanced stage, then you will exhibit the symptoms. Similarly here, male dogs will have the lower threshold, so you will see the increased prevalence, means male are coming to your clinics with this condition much more and you are reporting the incidence and automatically your incidence of prevalence is increased. Now this will lead to mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation means it is an important wall you are, I told you earlier, it is maintaining the chamber difference. 
okay now if it is being regurgitated means outflow inflow is going down uh, upside and down then you will see increased volume overload at left atrium and right ventricle and it will lead to congestive heart failure now this is the picture you can see this is a simple picture this is the regurgitation okay if it is working normally then this regurgitation will not occur now this is the picture taken from an article you will see here these are the modular these are the modular region particularly at the edges and here you will see the ruptured bonded tendon and in simple simple way to understand this is a normal wall it will open and close at the time of uh, that particularly the inflow and outflow and this is the leaky wall leaky wall means something is there suppose in a pipe there are different holes and their water is leaking it's like that This is the mitral wall leaflet thickening. You can see this thickening and nodular appearance and can be noticed. Means it is bulging. You can see this is this is the bulging in the left atrium. This is that uh, tracheal elevation and perihelial coronary edema. This is the tracheal elevation and dorsal ventral view generalized cardiomegaly. You can see this, this, uh, or at two o'clock or three o'clock, you are bulging at this place. This is for medication for chronic valvular disease, and uh, this is the main actually, the main thing that is incorporated is furosemide removement and HCAI spironolactone and beta blocker drugs according to the condition and you can add uh, as per the rhythm or as per the condition of the dog because different dogs will uh, let a different characteristic and different specific same breed same genetics same sex will be will presented to you at different uh, clinical forms so you have to get this dose according to that this you can see as mitral wall surgery repair and this is the heart lung machine for the form. This I have pictures too. I am showing because this is the machine machine that you are having. Then you only you can operate for mitral wall repair. Okay, and this is the surgery very much costly actually in uh, foreign it is given and one surgery is taking dollar uh, forty thousand fifty thousand forty thirty thousand and survivability rate is sixty to seventy five percent. So you can calculate the lakhs in Indian rupees. So it's very difficult uh, to cope up. Now, can I heart form disease? This is very much important disease and very much important in terms because uh, it has been reported from our state Gujarat and uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Pondicherry, Odisha, Northeast state, it's been uh, reported, uh, also reported. But actually the condition in these things is these states are having the vector for this heart form, but the condition is not being reported as an incidence person or prevalence person from that particular place. It may be due to the the conditions of dogs presented there, the diagnosis uh, thing in, involved there. So it is the important uh, heart form disease, and this is the thing that is the L1, L3 stage. That L3 is very much important. The days. The tissues it will migrate into the bloodstream and it will research, uh, reach to the adult stage. Now the most important thing is uh, six month. Six months is a very much long period and it will reproduce in the pulmonary artery and it, the dog will not test positive for at least six months after the initial infection. But here the owner will tell you because the dogs worms are working. The, they are established there. They are establishing their. Uh, Move, moving towards the predilection site. So while this movement, while this circulation, there's some sort of hindrance, some sort of reactions will be given to the body and that will be presented in the forms of nocturnal cuffing and that will be appreciated by the owner and that will be told to you and you should take care of that. Take care. Now of the important key points to remember is that it has been said that okay, mosquito season is, the uh, vector season is uh, in particular season. Now due to this condition the heart home season is year long summer spring fall winter everywhere okay and now these are the actually these foxes poyors and other infected dogs these foxes and poyors are in wildlife but they are they can come in contact with uh, the dogs that are uh, in stray and that, those stray dogs will come in contact with your, your dog and uh, if you are going nowadays actually you can take your dog while they're getting so another dog if it is affected we can bite the, the mosquito can bite over this and can transmit the infection so the most important thing is to test for heart form every 12 months 
everywhere the american heart lung association has told that if you want your dog to be free because this is the disease this heart worm disease is entirely preventable this kind of disease is entirely preventable if you follow these guidelines and you can go from website for this uh, very much guidelines and every 12 month or what dog should be tested this is the clinical sign mild moderate severe cable syndrome and the important thing is that cable syndrome actually it is the thing when your heart is uh, we have reached that right ventricle that vena cava and that dream and then you will the, the, you will see that bunch of bones at that particular place and you will see that sudden uh, severe lethargy weakness and you will see the hemodynamic differences This is thoracic radiography of lateral view DV view. Now this is very important, and it is characteristic of heart worm uh, presence in a dog. This reverse D shape pattern, and you can see that he was severely enlarged. That what I told you that heart is resting on the sternum, which is in normal case you will not see it resting on the sternum, and you have tortuous arteries and pulmonary artery enlargement, but an enlarged tortuous. These are tortuous uh, conditions. This is the echocardiography, and you will see this uh, large, uh, this actually this mass which is present. You can see uh, those which are expert in echocardiography can also appreciate the presence of worms in the right atrium, which I have told you will present in the cable syndrome. This is the AHA, that is American Heart Worm Society recommended treatment for heart worm. It just this is the protocol: day zero, day one, day one, twenty eight, thirty, sixty, eight, three sixty five means one year program has just been given, and it focuses, it emphasizes that uh, the FDA approved drug it should be included, and it involves that melatonin dihydrochloride. It is the FDA approved drug along with the doxycycline, along with the prednisolone glucocorticoids, and uh, the heart worm preventer. You can use either. Or other preventives according to the particular place you are having. So this is the protocol of Heart Worm Society, and it emphasizes the this protocol of 365 days and uh, use of it. Now arrhythmia. This very vast subject arrhythmia in the lines, but we I have taken three arrhythmias which are important. For understanding it, you have to go for the conduction system of heart. This is SA node, this is AV node, this is bundle of his, and this is Purkinje fiber. Actually, what it is, it is uh, you, I have told you that autonomic nervous system is regulating the heart system. Okay. Now, this is a muscle, involuntary muscle, not under your control. I mean, the intercalated disc. Okay. This is the plus point. We just having the intercalated disc. So this is interconnected. So the current passed here is will. To this, through this, it will go here. Through interconnected disc, it will go here and transfer to every heart. Means whole heart is just channelized. Whole heart is contracting and giving the function. Okay. Now this is the pacemaker of heart because it can send electrical impulses at a faster rate. So if anything, anything happened to a single node, every node, or here the size is enlarged, means the space is enlarged, then here the beam will take time to reach here. If something happens to this, then it will. Uh, take time to reach here. If this is then, this will uh, take time to contract or relax the whole ventricle. Okay, so by this contraction and relaxation, we will have the PQRST wave, and that are important for the detection of an arrhythmia. Okay, these are the causes of cardiac arrhythmia. Means all those diseases which are seen, uh, which we have seen in the previous slide, particularly DCM, mitral valve disease, this will lead to the arrhythmia. Sometimes, uh, actually, the fatal arrhythmia. Sometimes, what happens? A dogs come to you, and it is having uh, the accidental case, or it has been just uh, fell down from a height from uh, floor to uh, from height to the floor. So, the all these cases, that heat stroke cases, all these cases should also go for a cardiovascular examination. Why? Because these things may generate to the dangerous ventricular arrhythmia, and uh, you will your dog will go for a cardiac death or cardiac arrest. So this is the sinus arrhythmia. It results from the variation of vagal tone. The ECG changes are normal heart rate, but a regularly irregular sinus rhythm. You can see, you can see here there is a regularly irregular sinus rhythm. But this branches will take periods to be more predisposed because they are having the increase because they are having the shock. Structural anatomically, so they have to uh, go more for the inspiration and expiration. Now uh, this is the most important element. 
yeah that you should know that is entry of operation now the bottom thing is here sa model there ab model is there and bundle of is and voltage finder now this is the normal heart so normal pqrs key is produced now entry of operation mein kya hota hai ki this multiple re entrant circuits what you are seeing this circle what you are seeing this circle these are extra extra channels the world winds the extra impulses which is being generated at different focal points and along with this normal channel they will give you this uh, waves so what you will see is you will see this in between the normal complex you will see like this 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 this, this you will see the fibrillation now this is the easy, uh, this is the simple the ecg waves you can see that uh, fewer appreciable is in between the fibrillation pattern and what is the simple goal of therapy it is fibrillating okay it is fibrillating means your hand is not moving at, your heart is not moving at the dog's heart is not moving at a normal pace pace it is fibrillating so that should be settled down so you have to use that uh, <coughs> slow down the ventricular response rate and because yeah, if uh, atria is contracting at a faster rate it will uh, let the erratic contents to the ventricles and the ventricle will also move towards fast rate and then it will can go into a decompensatory form that is ventricular tachycardia and that will lead to the death of the animal so you can use that beta blocker which will slow down the artery this is ventricular tachycardia here it is simple you are seeing here but here there is a abnormal impulse which is generating this type of ventricular uh, tachycardia if not controlled they will go into ventricular fibrillation this in simple ecg you are seeing that heart rate tachycardia is more than uh, bpm the simple therapy is you have to go for video k these you can go for but it's not available really practice here much more commonly video k is best now this is the thing that is interventional approach to manage cardiac arrhythmia this is for performing routinely yearly in uh, foreign countries so what is this actually this which you are seeing these are the uh, multi tube means multi electrode catheters which are placed in the coronary sinus and the high atrium and these uh, right ventricle right atrium is at particular places of heart these uh, thing are place means it is called as radio frequency catheter ablation and uh, it is been particularly used in case when the rate is 240 to 410 for the 10 beats per minute that is atrial ventricular accessory pathway anemia what is being said as orthodromic av reciprocating tachycardia it is particularly seen in labrador and boxer actually what you will see here is uh, these uh, pathway the, what are these pathways actually the normal pulse uh, electric pathway conduction system pathway which i had demonstrated earlier along with these the parallel pathways are connected they will generate the impulse on their own and so much that they can shoot up to they can get an impulse shoot up to 500 beats per minute that you are seeing so to control these accessory pathways they are the heart is being ablated at particular places then by radio frequency the ablation is being uh, the particular points the location where there is a normal rhythm is generated they are being cured and uh, there is success rate which is being demonstrated here and its coverage is costly uh, so it is being practiced in foreign countries and very good approach to treat the arrhythmia which are being uh, not treated by the arrhythmic drugs or they are having the side side effect or they the drugs cannot take this now the compensatory mechanism very much important this will lead to the heart failure that will be transferred as left heart failure or right heart failure now a simple in simple language when there is a myocardial injury and there is a decreased cardiac output the ventricular performance is job and there is decreased cardiac output. this will lead to reduced arterial blood pressure baroreceptor stimulation because the thing is really so arterial let the response that okay oxygen saturation is getting to a slow side then you know hormonal system will be activated that i had shown you this type you earlier it will increase the sympathetic activity it means that everything will be go towards the higher rate so there will vasoconstriction and ras very much important when it is activated angiotensin 1 and 2 is activated the potent vasoconstrictors are activated and this will further improve cardiac uh, cardiac output means these are the compensatory mechanism but the thing is the damage to heart is increasing why because the cycle is going on the cycle is going on to one extent these all mechanism will fail and you will see a condition that will called as a heart failure now these are the anti arrhythmic agents in law these are commonly used as ketogen ethanol diltrexin sotenol procainamide desoxin is also used you are seeing that ventricular arrhythmia 
and supraventricular arrhythmia that are very much common that is atrial fibrillation these are the particular doses and you can use and most important thing these medications are needed to be titrated what is titration because according to breed susceptibility according to loading and maintenance dose they should be titrated and they should be continuously monitored you cannot just give the medication and let the person go home or don't go home now what i had described the compensatory mechanism which will lead to heart failure is heart failure actually what is heart disease actually it can affect any condition heart failure is when heart disease is entered into the heart failure now in that you can see two things left sided right sided acute heart failure and the main thing is in left sided heart failure you will see pulmonary edema and right sided heart failure you will see the ascites and pulmonary effusion this is a simple mechanism the systolic dysfunction and diastolic dysfunction is affected there is a decrease in stroke volume it means systole means contraction diastole means relaxation systole means uh, contraction is dysfunction so the total amount of volume of blood that is needed to be circulated will not be in the proper amount and all these factors will lead to the elevated diastolic pressure and the left heart failure and right heart failure is uh, these are the drugs used for the canine heart failure therapy this is the wonder drug pneumonidine digoxin the most important thing is you can combine these drug and get the get your effect very much good these are other drugs benzapril dobutamine fusimab spironolactone it reverses new modeling actually this potassium sparing diuretic it is to contract the effect of potassium the loss of potassium and uh, fusimab very much important it is the mainstay of therapy it is the first line which you will incorporate in the congestive heart failure and it is to reduce the hypo uh, this congestive heart rate that is the fluid which is retentioning in the ascites abdomen or the left heart failure or the right heart failure these are the important drug actually nitroglycerin is very much important in case of treatment of uh, acute heart failure patient and it is very easily available in the general form and it will give you uh, the very much instant effect and uh, acute heart failure should involve nitroglycerin in its treatment protocol along with the oxygen therapy now is the prognosis of uh, dogs with advanced heart failure because often people would ask that okay uh, once a dog failure has been started or dog uh, heart failure has been started in dogs then how at what time or how much time the dog can live so these are the condition by research uh, it has been said that oh it means you are seeing the clinical dilated cardiomyopathy a dog can survive up to 19 weeks 1 to 3 years in asymptomatic and 6 to 14 months in degenerative mitral valve disease means approximately you can say an overall irrespective of the exercise and heart disease 6 to uh, 14 months or 9 months is the average age. life expectancy of a dog suffering from after heart failure has been uh, arised now this is the take home message take home message is what till date or now it is very much clear to everyone that heart Disease is that important for heart diseases are important as primary or also the secondary condition which are leading to heart disease. Okay, and as they are insidious in nature, means they are insidious, they are hidden. Their heart is very much protected in a thoracic rib cage, and there are different breeds. There is different species, uh, different breeds of a dog, and different variability you will see uh, within a breed within a, a thing. So you have to. circulate screen our dog and auscultation is the primary thing which we have to opt for along with the other diagnostic procedures in such an ego and uh, it is very important recognizing the cardiac diseases cardiac biomarkers will definitely play an important role because they will let you disease they will get you to know that how much disease has progressed how much disease has progressed and how much uh, you can go for the increase in the life span life expectancy of a dog on the basis of testing of these markers and advising or advocating the treatment of heart disease so quality of life in life expectancy can be improved with the early diagnosis and treatment so uh, these are the, uh, a lot of article has been searched on and these are the books very important books of ecg and uh, drug 
related to drug or treatment, which is which is referred and uh, students can refer. So thank you, thank you for uh, patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Sarita. Yes, sir. So thank you very much for giving thank the beautiful you, presentation with all the information regarding cardiac disease in dog. So thank let's you, start our question and answer session. Yes, sir. So uh, one question from the participant, how to take care of cadine regarding heart disease How to take care of canine regarding heart disease? Yes. This is the question, sir. Yes. Actually, yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, how to take care of uh, canine regarding heart disease? So they, it will be divided into two things. If you means a uh, dog, if it is being presented with a heart disease, or you are having a breed of dog which is predisposed, having predisposition to heart disease. Okay. There are two things. The thing is one which. The dog is having the heart disease, the veterinarian will take care and advise to it. Okay. There are drugs which I have mentioned. But the most important part on her owner is taking care of dog during the lifetime so that a breed which is pre having the predisposition or normally a breed which is having a increased demand of uh, some supplementations or increased demand of nutrients for heart health should be taken care of. So you have to take care of the first thing that which breed you are having. If you are having boxers, if you are having great day, if you are having Rottweilers, these are the large breeds, hunting breeds. And I had told you that these great Danian boxers are having a lesser taurine production, lesser taurine biosynthesis as compared to other breed of dogs. So food or diet is very important thing which you should take care of. You have to provide a diet which are supplementing these amino acids because some cases have shown reversibility but if detected at earlier stage. So you have to supplement with uh, these proteins, a good quality protein, Orange, uh, amino acid, uh, proper diet should be taken care of. Uh, and you should be uh, you should be visiting a veterinary cardiologist on a regular basis if you are having such type of breeds. And every year, like we humans go for uh, after 30 years, there are many diseases which we go for as a screening test to let them uh, detected early and prevented early. Likewise, if your dog is getting uh, towards the older age, five, eight, six years, or some breeds which are having the early susceptibility, you can go for a regular cardiac visit and you have to take it with. As an owner, you have to particularly take care of the diet, exercise. You have to give exercise morning, evening basis, 30 minutes because Labradors, as I told you, they are more prone to obesity. And so they are more prone to obesity. So they are having more risk of cardiovascular disorder at this uh, particular time. So you have to take care of the exercise, you have to take care of the feed. You have to take care also of your lifestyle because your lifestyle, if you are having a sedentary lifestyle, the seat, you will uh, let your dog to be there and you will also be more prone to heart diseases and <clears throat> directly your dog will also be affected by your lifestyle habit and it will be prone to heart diseases thank you madam uh, this question from heartworm disease yes sir. what what is ideal profound for treatment of heartworm disease actually uh, that Miller Soman dihydrochloride. Okay, this is mentioned by American Heart Bomb Society, but it is costly, so it is not uh, incorporated. This actually, uh, it, that drug is also very safe. So, uh, here the protocol which I had mentioned in the slide is different, and the followed is actually the heart bomb preventive. That is, two things are being incorporated in the therapy that is the heart bomb. very much important 
actually uh, in the treatment protocol and why it is being used actually there is an Volbachia uh, bone that is very much important for the establishment of this heart bones into the dog's body so doxys take care of that wall patient here. It will uh, get the reduction of that, it will reduce the number of that, it will reduce uh, the, because it, it, it is a vector like the a mosquito is a vector for heart bone, that is a volume is a vector for heart bone. So it will reduce that approach or it will reduce that number. So it, ultimately that much more bones is not uh, being established. And the third thing is prednisone that has been able in the treatment. Why? Because as I have told that heart bones take six long months to get established and you will, uh, six long months is very much long period. It is traveling, it is uh, establishing, the female is leaving the eggs. So all these things will lead to the hemodynamic disturbance, the coughing which you are seeing is due to the irritation of that bone. So that when you want to take care of it. And the main thing <coughs> that I'm wrong is that, that once it has been established, once it has been established, the worm is for the heart is full of worm. Then you have to go for surgery. The surgeon will decide the things to be operated and decide. And if the surgical condition is being uh, not approached, the main aim to prolong the life of this heart worm cases is to let be the female sterile and to not produce the eggs. Hello. Okay, thank you, madam. Okay, uh, one more question from the same. Uh, mostly, which breed is affected with heartworm disease in India? Actually, heartworm disease, it is a worm, okay? The vector is a mosquito. So, all those breeds which is kept by the people or the owners to uh, guard their house, to just uh, guard their farms and all those breeds, hunting breeds like Great Dane Boxers, Rottweilers and these all Dobermans, okay, Dobermans, these are being yes, used for guarding, they are kept outside so they are more prone to mosquito biting and they can have the heart disease at a much more propensity and rest uh, these are the, the, the answer to your question is this that the, these breeds are particularly more sensitive. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, one more question from how many leads use in canine patient to record heart disease condition? Okay, the main important thing the leads used, uh, there are we used to use that human machine in case of canine patient. The simple thing which can make us to judge an arrhythmia is the lead one and two three is easy and it is easily done and uh, this is the lead which is used for uh, detection of arrhythmia and heart diseases in case of can i lead one two and three and there are many many more leads actually uh, the polygonal lead orthogonal lead the intravasive lead where that tongue is being used for the attachment and uh, you can use uh, that thing Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, one question from our Facebook, Dr. Mohit Singh. He asked yes. about treatment for mitral valve. Okay, actually, treatment for mitral valve. Treatment for mitral valve as uh, the AC, uh, we have to follow this uh, ACVIM guideline. It is consensus guideline of American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine, and uh, it is a uh, veterinary community it provide the update for these condition and the actually the approach to mitral wall disease is best if we will go through these guidelines these guidelines has just one like the stage which we had described stage a b b1 b2 c d now the drugs the thing earlier stage b1 and b2 is the stage where uh, uh, we have to just no treatment or sometimes it is not uh, detectable uh, that the heart disease is there. So when it has been detected at stage D and D and mitral wall disease, it will lead to congestive heart failure. Okay. So one option which I told you is the surgical, you have to go for mitral wall repair. This is the treatment that it is in case when it is severely affected. Another the therapy, the therapeutic treatment is that 
it will lead to it will develop into two cases that acute heart failure like you it will lead to acute cases or congestive cases okay chronic cases so in acute cases we have to just act very promptly so you have to use that fusenide at the end of two mg per kg it is administered in iv and most importantly the most important thing is in case of acute cases you can go for the uh, that constant rate infusion Prosenide because it is the heart you know MVD is going towards the uh, acute failure so we have to go for acute constant rate infusion at the base of um, point point six six to one mg and we have to incorporate fusimide we have to incorporate primobendone and we have to incorporate at least in inhibitors and most importantly the oxygen and most importantly is that NXT which is associated with this dyspnea so we can add to it tranquilizers and Buto, butorphenol, etc. Uh, we can add and go for the treatment of mitral wall disease. One thing actually I want to say: all these diseases will lead to heart failure, and mitral wall disease is a very slow progressive disease. Those with mild will go unnoticed, and those with severe will get to the congestive heart failure. So we have to go as for the congestive heart failure. Great, thank you, madam. Uh, the last question from Dr. Anil Sharma. How to diagnose the cardiac disease under field condition where no ECG and no radiography is there? Okay, sir. Actually, uh, how to diagnose cardiac condition in field condition? Sir, it is uh, particularly related to canines only. Yeah, yes. Yes. So, actually, uh, if it is a canine or you are getting a canine in the field condition, if you are not getting having these instruments, okay, the simple instrument you will be having a uh, auscultation that is stethoscope. You can go for it. And if you are uh, if in field condition, if you are in a lab or a dispensary or a orderly clinic, so along with it, the very much less costly nowadays it is uh, coming along with the devices handheld devices you can attach just uh, you can just sense it. like the thermometer it senses the ECG machine also senses you can record in the phone you can just handheld very much handheld no machine no money only charge is required so it is also very 20 23 or, or 10,000 so this can be go for and in field condition only stethoscope and clinical sign can help but actually actually if you specific diagnosis you should have a minimum minimum electrocardiographic machine at your place to let uh, the picture going towards a good prognosis and good therapies okay thank you madam thank you sir. Uh, so at the end of the webinar i request dr deepak suthar organizing oh, no. secretary of this webinar series for what of thanks dr deepak please Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir.